Welcome to Gartner ThinkCast. I'm Karen Stokes Lockhart. And today we're discussing the giant, complex, and thorny topic that is data and all it entails. Every business likes to claim that it's data-driven or at least data-informed, but too often that's not the way they actually work. Data is relegated to an IT function and it becomes too siloed to make nearly the impact that it can. In the worst cases, being data-driven is equated to simply producing more reports and dashboards. To discuss how to successfully link data to business outcomes and why doing so is absolutely vital, I'm going to kick it over to Andrew White, a distinguished VP analyst for data and analytics, and Sarah Turkley, a principal advisory for data and analytics. Much of what they'll cover will be part of a workshop on tap for Gartner's Data and Analytics Summit this August in Orlando, Florida. But we're going to give you a sneak peek. Welcome, Andrew and Sarah. Our team has put together a toolkit that helps folks link their data and analytics to business outcomes. What would you say this involves? Why did we create this? And what should our audience consider when using it? Great question, Sarah. So we originally started this project with the goal of facilitating a exploration or discovery effort between business, IT, and data and analytics folks. People who work in supply chain, marketing, sales, finance, maybe HR, those who know about the type of business outcomes they're trying to achieve, they're the ideal target for this effort. At the same time, the people on the IT side and those who talk about data and analytics want to get their colleagues across the organization to recognize that data in a business system, like an application, actually can be their best friend or their enemy. They want to get them engaged and excited. There are also other efforts such as data and analytics governance, business applications and software engineering that are helping support innovation. Our toolkit helps connect data and analytics to not just business outcomes, but also business process, business process change, and application design. We determined that it starts with getting the business side to open up about their business priorities. We have to ask them, what do you mean by an outcome? What decisions are you working on? What's your process? Which systems do you use? And how are you measuring success? Yes, and and that's really where we see the light bulb go off. And I suspect it's partially because you often have the IT side and the business side, and the two tend to be very siloed. And this provides a way to really break down those walls. That's true. But there's another silo, which is between the individual business departments, say between sales and marketing, or maybe PR and HR. Because data and analytics impacts all business outcomes, it can facilitate getting different departments across the organization on the same page at the same time. There they may discover things like, oh, I didn't know you were the person that put that piece of data in. Now I know where it comes from. That could be very useful to them. So it creates a common language and a common learning environment. There's a bit of a prioritization mechanism in there as well. We know data is a huge topic and it can be so overwhelming that people just kind of tune out, right? The, the scope is too big. So if our challenge is to try to fix or target all data all the time, then of course, no one has any clue where to begin. And so this helps them really think about what actually matters to their stakeholders and how can they bring these stakeholders together around that. A lot of this framework is based around what we call our Gartner Value Pyramid. Can you take us through what that is and what it looks like? So think of it as a triangle or a pyramid shape with a wide base at the bottom and a pinnacle pointing upwards. We used to focus on the bottom up. A data program would start with a conversation about data. Sounds logical, right? But it only works if you have no customers, unlimited budget and free time, which is to say it applies to absolutely no one. Nowadays, we've recognized that if we focus top down to first focus on outcomes, we can prove the link to data at the bottom. So we say, don't start with data, start with business outcomes. Business outcomes sit at the apex or the top of the value pyramid. Data is right at the bottom. Get to the data and you'll figure out the least amount of information that can make the biggest business impact. Working with the Gartner Business Value Pyramid, you can see how to connect the most strategic objectives, such as the key aspects of your organization's profit and loss or your operating budget, to the lowest level of data in your business applications and systems at the bottom of that pyramid. You work your way down from the desired outcome to identify the data you need to worry about most. Absolutely. Thank you for painting that picture for us. And to drill down into the practical aspect of it, organizations should start with a specific business outcome and then explore that outcome in terms of 
what performance metrics might use to define success. Then we can ask, what changes will need to take place at the business process level? Or what indicators will tell us that we're making progress toward that objective? And from there, we get a better picture of the types of KPIs that are even worth measuring in the first place. From there, you can identify what data will be needed to drive trust in those KPIs. And that trust enables us to accept that the changes we want to make to the business are driving the kinds of behavior we actually want in the first place. Therefore, data is driving the outcomes and it's explicitly linked together. Clearly, any organization has many, many business priorities. So to start, we recommend choosing a high-level, executive-focused business outcome. This outcome is probably something that leadership has already said is really important, is mission critical for our organization's success in a given planning period. And the altitude that's best to focus on here is more in the business leadership or steering committee level. We don't want to get into the departmental manager's goals just yet, unless we have to. And ideally, this outcome itself that we start with should include a time period over which that change is targeted. Then, of course, there'll be some underlying data that's used to measure the change over that time. Enterprises are heading not toward a new normal, but rather a no normal, an environment of uncertainty and ambiguity that requires continuous flexibility, innovation, and investment or reinvestment in data and analytics strategy. Join us at Gartner's Data and Analytics Summit, where we'll address the most significant challenges that data and analytics leaders face as they build the innovative and adaptable organizations of the future. Check out the link in the show notes for more details. Sarah, maybe you can talk a little bit about how this helps identify which decisions need to be re-engineered and why. The first major challenge here is, unsurprisingly, where do we even start? So consider how executive leaders seek to re-engineer their decision-making capabilities to move the organization forward. Ask things like, where are you today? What does good look like in the future? And where do you aspire to be in 2025, for example? Then you can work to understand your stakeholders' decision-making and assess where capabilities and deficits exist. It's critical here to consult those cross-functional leaders across the business And this will give you the foundation on which you'll build your business case. The idea of shifting your approach from a broad focus on data and being data-driven to targeting the specific outcomes that must be achieved is the critical foundation for making your decisions more connected, contextual, and continuous. So aligning first on what's most critical enables your conversations to focus on who is involved in these decisions or these outcomes when they're involved, and when decisions need to be made more quickly or even automated. Broadening this conversation helps us consider which data sources might exist that maybe we aren't considering today, or things that would actually provide critical context to these specific decisions that must be made. So these types of questions that I've just talked through help organizations to assess capabilities and deficits, which then inform the actions that must be taken to actually then re-engineer those decisions in the business. Sarah, we'd love to thank you for your time today. It's been great talking with you. Yeah, great talking to you too, Andrew. Have a good one. 